Oklahoma, they are hot right now. I put out one of those Zoolander tweets the other day. Oklahoma, so hot right now. And they're the number four team in the 24-7 composite team rankings. And they're just getting it done. They start the week off, uh, or weekend off, I should say, getting a commitment from three-star receiver Anthony Evans, the speedster uh, out of Texas, and a guy that a lot of people thought were going to Georgia, thought he was going to go play for Brian McClendon. He ends up taking his talents to Norman. He's going to play with with Jeff Levy and Brent Venables. And then uh, what we thought, they go into Florida and they get top 247 safety Macari Vickers, who we like a lot. So, Drew, there's so much to talk about going through Oklahoma and their commit list and what they've done so far. But to me, out of all the first-year head coaches, and and, and Marcus Freeman, I'm going to take him out of it because he's done a tremendous job. But Brent Venables has been the most impressive. Uh, And to me, it's it's been a little bit of a surprise, i got to say. I, I agree with you. The Caden Green one is the commitment that sticks out to me because I remember waking up Friday, the crystal ball was painted Georgia. Uh, I think Saturday, you know, because I'm out on a field, you're, you're tracking so many different things. I, I wake up and I look, check the recent commits, and the kid picked Oklahoma. I thought someone had made a mistake in the database or something like that. But sure enough, Brent Venables and that staff, um, they're able to get the job done in terms of getting him in the boat. And I, I don't know if you want me to pivot into this Caleb Spencer take I got, but I, I'm ready to fire on it if you are, and, and just what he means for Oklahoma's class. Well, let's let's give it some pretext a little bit because I was reading your article from this weekend, and I saw that name Isaiah Simmons get thrown around, and I said, hey, what in the heck is going on here? But you, you're talking about, hey, Brent Venables might have the next Isaiah Simmons and Caleb Spencer. Drew, talk to the people. Explain why. Yeah. I mean, so like Christian Academy, they come down to Fort Lauderdale. It's a team out of Virginia. I didn't know anything about most of their guys, really. I mean, you watch their tape, but you don't dive into it uh, with just with them being outside of my region. But Caleb Spencer is a guy that took over the game. Um, it was doing everything on defense, lined up all over the spot, safety, linebacker, pass rusher by the time the game ended. Uh, highlight of the, night, of the day might have been when – he turned around to the media gathered in the end zone and said, I'm going to block this extra point, get out your camera and record it. Sure enough, he lunged over two defenders and, and blocked the extra point. Uh, I thought that was pretty notable, but I, I liked him. I started talking to him after the game. Hey, you're committed to Oklahoma. You know, what, you're from the DC area. What, what's up with that? And he said that uh, Brent Venables has told him he could be the next Isaiah Simmons, be a guy that is a chess piece on defense that has moved around. And I'm like, man, that. That kind of makes some sense. They're recruiting him for that cheetah position, which is as exotic as it sounds uh, for the Sooners. So he's a guy that's going to move around for them. And my, my, my big thing with him is if Caleb Spencer, who I think in the composite rankings is Oklahoma's second lowest uh, commit in the class of 2023, watch out for Oklahoma at some point down the line because I think he's a guy that's going to be able to make an impact in the SEC one day. So nice find for the Sooners, and I'm a big fan of Caleb Spencer. And we'll see where he finishes in the rankings. I mean, he's a guy we had as a graded out as a safety. We moved him to the linebacker. He's moved up again. We'll see how the next few months go. But uh, another guy that's a stock up one for me. We'll have an update in the 2023 rankings the second week of October. So Caleb Spencer, definitely a guy to keep an eye on. But Jackson Arnold, the crown jewel of their class and somebody that they identified early. We've always kind of had pretty high, uh, but he took that jump after the Elite 11's MVP showing that he had. He has now carried on that production that he had and the momentum that he built over the offseason. Uh, just looking at him week one, they, they get the win over Rockwall Heath, 47-14, uh, to 14, but he had over 200 yards passing. He had a couple touchdowns through the air, one on the ground, uh, 87 yards rushing. To me, he is like the complete player and exactly what you want in Jeff Levy's offense, Drew. Uh, just kind of looking what they have in that quarterback room right now. Obviously, you got the transfer, Dylan Gabriel, Nick Evers, a top 247 quarterback last year in the 2022 cycle. But I think Jackson Arnold has it to him. Whatever that word it is, I think he's got it. And I think he's going to be a guy that's going to be in the mix day one in Norman. Oh, it's, it's shaping up for the perfect situation with Nick Evers. I was a big Nick Evers guy last cycle. I think the thing for me with this Oklahoma group is what happens with Jeff Levy. Uh, we haven't even started really playing games. We got through week zero, but Levy's already getting linked to potential openings around the country and whatnot. So 
I'm not saying he's the glue guy for this offensive group, but I think it'll be interesting to track what happens once we get closer. You know, does Levy go somewhere? He potentially try to get Jackson Arnold to fo to follow him, and I, you know, we we don't, that doesn't always happen, but it could. Uh, but I, I do agree. I mean, both sides of the ball. We haven't even really got into all of Oklahoma's class, but there's a lot of pieces to like. Well, let's get into it a little bit. And, and listen, we've talked a lot about Oklahoma, but another guy I wanted to highlight it, PJ at a bar a. And, and we saw his brother who was on Bruce Feldman's freaks list uh, was so impactful this weekend in Nebraska Northwestern. His brother, Tommy, uh, a defensive lineman at Northwestern, uh, very similar in terms of the athletic makeup and obviously some strong genes there in that family. Jaquez Petaway, another guy that we like, a top 247 receiver. Caden Green was one of the best offensive linemen in Bradenton at the Future 50. We talked a little bit about Macari Vickers. We haven't even talked about Jacoby Johnson, Derek LeBlanc, who I think is a really good fit, Samuel Amosago, Colton Vasek, who is probably going to end up a top 247 guy, and Lewis Carter, Josiah Wagner, Daylon Smothers. The list goes on and on. <laughs> I mean, they are deep, and, and I love this class. I go all the way through it. There's only a handful of classes like this in this cycle that I go through top to bottom, and I really love what they've done to me. And I say it as a surprise, and it's not disrespect, but I, they are ready for the SEC, and I think Texas is getting there as well, but I like Oklahoma's class more than Texas. I think they're, they're better top to bottom. I know Texas is higher ranked right now, but in terms of getting ready for that transition to the SEC, you got 10 guys in the top 247 in the 2023 cycle for Brent Venables. And this is year one without playing a game. I, hey, if I'm an Oklahoma fan right now, I'm, I'm, I'm elated that Brent, Brent Venables is my head coach and I love what he's putting together. Hey, and Conrad Hussey, who I talked about in the juice, that's another guy uh, that Oklahoma's having some dialogue with and could potentially visit down the line. I, I think when I look at the commit list, it's just very uh, national. You know, they got six kids from Texas, four kids from Florida. And then after that, you're in North Carolina. Uh, you're all over the place. And, and that's what you got to do if you're at Oklahoma. So you're right. The future looks bright. Um, and with them headed to the SEC, this is why you move to the SEC. It expands your brand. As much of a national name that Oklahoma is, when you're going to play in that conference, it's going to open some more doors. And I think we're seeing it a little ahead of schedule here with the 2023 group for the Sooners. Here's the stat for you, Drew. As of right now, I believe there are 206 players out of the 247 in the top 247 that are committed. 80 of them, 80 of them are committed to SEC schools. The second highest conference after that is the ACC with 29. The Big 12, Oklahoma, in Texas combined for 19. So that would almost be 100 out of the top 247 players. And you still got some meat left on the bone with about 41 guys that need to commit. And a lot of those guys are leaning to SEC schools. So all the talent, we talk about super conferences, it certainly looks like the SEC is not lacking there.